Welcome to another lesson of Connect here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ. If this is the first time you're visiting us, thanks for joining us. And I hope you learned something from our lesson today about be careful what you say. Now let's start out. What do you think is the strongest part of your body? Is it your arms because you're good lifters? Is it your legs because you like to run? Or maybe your stomach because you can do a lot of sit-ups? Or how about your brain because you're really smart? Well, I have a little riddle for you this morning. Let's see if you can guess it. I can hide or I can show myself. I am usually wet. I can curl myself up. I am made mostly of muscles. Are you getting a clue? I can taste food. What am I? If you guess tongue, you are correct. How many of you can curl your tongue at home? Not everybody can do that. I can do it, make it look like a little taco. How about you? Are you able to do that? Not everybody can. So our tongue has something to do with our scripture today. So let's take a look at that. It comes from Ephesians 4, 29. Our scripture today comes from Ephesians 4, verse 29. When you talk, don't say anything bad, but say the good things that people need, whatever will help them grow stronger. Then what you say will be a blessing to those who hear you. We can destroy friendships that we spent years building instantly with a few words. We can also use our words to completely turn around somebody's day. As Christians, we should speak kindness whenever we can. I'm going to give you a little demonstration of building someone up or tearing them down. Let's imagine you have somebody new who's moved into your neighborhood or maybe into your classroom. Let's call them Bluebell. Well, Bluebell is walking down the street by your house and you see them, you think, I don't think that person could be my friend. Next, you say, I don't know, they don't really look like me, so I don't know if we can be friends. You might think, Bluebell, I have enough friends. Why do I need more friends? And then you're left with tearing poor Bluebell down and making them feel bad. Now, you might feel bad that you've said some unkind things to this person that you don't really know. But you can say you're sorry and put them back together so to speak, by saying you're sorry and hoping that they feel better. But even though saying sorry is a good thing when we've hurt someone's feelings or said something wrong, do you think they really forget right away the unkind things we've said or done to them? I don't think so. I think they want to feel better because you've said they're sorry, so even though we've done the good thing of saying we're sorry and we didn't mean to hurt their feelings, they probably still haven't forgot about it. And it's kind of like this, how I've taped Bluebell back together. The hurt is still there and probably visible to them and won't go away for a little while until we've shown what a good friend we can be. So let's remember that and we'll bring it back up again later. So this morning I have a special story called, What If Everybody Said That? So while we're reading the story, I want you to imagine, what if we all said exactly what was on our mind? I think we might have a lot of people walking around who needed to be apologized to and taped up. We'll see. I hope you enjoy the story. What if everybody said that? At this park, some kids asked if they could play with me, and I said, no boys allowed. Their mom yelled at me, 
What if everybody said that? No freckles allowed. Hey, no climbing for girls. That's mean. No big kids on the swings. What? In our class, we were drawing dogs. I looked at the other kids' pictures and said, they don't look like dogs to me. The art teacher made me apologize. What if everybody said that? You might think it's garbage anyway. I really am a bad artist. I'll never draw again. At the beach, I just wanted to scare my cousin. Look, I teased, there's a shark. The lifeguard heard her screaming and called down to me. What if everybody said that? Shark, swimming, polar bear, peanut butter and jellyfish, monster, hermit crabs, the undertoads, help. During sherry time at school, I really wanted to tell my class about my new shoes. I shouted, me first, me first. Our teacher frowned at me and said, what if everybody said that? The classroom would sound like this. I am an elf, look at me, look at me, look at me. This is my turtle, Flash. He is the fastest turtle known to mankind. Me, me, me first. This is my favorite comic book called Crab Boy and Lobster Girl. They fight crime under the sea. Me first, me first. This is Camilla Paca. My aunt bought him back from her rock climbing trip in Nepal. I believe it's my turn. Me, me, no, me. This is an extremely valuable baseball signed by Lefty LaRue. It's never been out of the box. It's that special. Chaos everywhere. When a boy in my class got glasses, I said, you sure look funny. The principal heard me. He shook his head. What if everybody said that? I thought I looked pretty. Oh my God, did you see the new girl? Those braces, LOL, metal mouth. What's with that in her hair, that flower? W-E-I-R-D-O, weirdo, totally. Wow, you are really bad at math. This is hard for me. That shirt looks so weird. When one of the kids forgot her lunch for our field trip, the guide asked some of us to share ours. I said, no way, I'm gonna eat mine all by myself. The guide, the guide glared at, down at me. What if everybody said that? When our teacher was in the hospital, the substitute suggested we make him get well cards. I said, maybe later. I'm busy playing now. Now his box is empty. The sub held up the empty card box. What if everybody said that? On the soccer field, when my team was losing, I said, this game is dumb. I quit. The coach blew her whistle. What if everybody said that? Be a pretty empty field. When a new kid moved in next door, I told her, I've got plenty of friends already, and I didn't invite her to play. Mom heard and gave me a disappointing look. What if everybody said that? The next day, I went to the girl's house, and I said to her, I'm sorry, let's be friends. Welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, your cat is so pretty. We could go ride bikes in the park. Do you want to play with me? What if everybody said that? Everybody should. All right, let's see how much we remember of the scripture that we opened with today and how it fits with our story. What if everybody said that? Do you remember the first part and how it starts? Can you see it in the cards down here? If you said, when you talk, you are correct. That is first. When you 
talk. Don't say anything bad. That's the second part. What comes next? But the good things. So when you talk, don't say anything bad, but the good things that people need to feel good, right? Whatever will help them grow stronger instead of tearing them down like we did with Mr. Bluebell, we're going to build them up. Then what you say will be a blessing to those who hear you. So when you talk, don't say anything bad, but say the good things that people need, whatever will help them to grow stronger. Then what when you say what you say will be a blessing to those who hear you. So I'm going to leave you with this little demonstration of what it happens when we say cruel or mean things. So I brought to here a tube of toothpaste. So if I squeeze all the toothpaste out, it's pretty easy to get it all out, isn't it? All right, now if you were here, I'd ask you to put that back in the tube. Can you do that? No, that would be impossible to get it back in. And that's kind of like what I want you to remember from our scripture today. When we say the mean things like we did to Bluebell, or they did in the story, even when we apologize, it's hard to put things back together. So what's the answer for that? Of course, sometimes we are going to do and say things that are unkind and without thinking. So we definitely should apologize and say we're sorry. But maybe we should think of that scripture that we heard today and think before we speak. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing all my new and old friends together here today to learn about what we should say and not say. And to remember that you have brought us here to build each other up, not to tear each other down. Amen.